And as we do every week at this time, let's take a look at highlights now. The other six games played this weekend in the USFL. The Men at Halftime Report is being brought to you by Skin Bracer Aftershave. Takes care of men who take care of their skin. Skin Bracer by Men at. What would happen if they had a football game and nobody showed? Well, that's the way it looks Sunday afternoon in the L.A. Coliseum. Only 5,600 showed up to watch the Baltimore Stars in red against the L.A. Express. The Express were winning 6-3 in the fourth quarter. Chuck Fusina, the quarterback for Baltimore, on the run. But Ray Cattage of L.A., they say, made a late hit. I didn't see it was that vicious, but they threw the flag, and the Stars kept their drive alive down to the two, where Alan Harvin takes the pitch out and walks in to give Baltimore a 10-6 lead. After the Stars intercepted backup L.A. quarterback Frank Sire, Alan Harvin would go 21 yards on this scoring romp. He finished the day with 111 yards on the ground. We felt we coming in this game, we had to be L.A. to, you know, make our record what it is now. And uh, we, we feel real good about the win, especially the offense. You know, we're starting to, to, to gel and starting to come along, and things are working well for us. Look out for the Baltimore Stars. They're now at 500. They won two in a row. They'll be home next week against Memphis. Meanwhile, last Saturday night at Portland Civic Stadium, all sorts of fans showing up to watch the hometown breakers against the favorite Oakland Invaders. Early on, first quarter, Matt Robinson to Dan Ross. Touchdown. The breakers have a 7 to nothing lead before almost 24,000 in Portland. Meanwhile, the Portland defense gave Bobby Abair of Oakland fits. This is one of four Portland interceptions on the night. Now, Dick Corey told this man to go all the way. He didn't quite do it, but leave it to Matt Robinson and the Portland offense to do the job. Robinson to Dan Ross again, rolling right, four-yard touchdown. Breakers led it 17-0. Oakland would tie the game, scoring the next 17 points. Bear, Bobby Bear is having a great year. Coming over to Oakland from that Michigan merger, finds Albert Bentley, 33 yards and a touchdown for the second-year man out of Miami, but the Portland defense stuck it to Oakland. And after the defense got done hitting Oakland, well, the offense hit him with a little razzle-dazzle. Lewis Jackson on the halfback pass to Anthony Allen. Final, Portland had a big upset over Oakland, 30-17. to Then last Thursday night in Orlando, maybe an even bigger upset. Showboats and Renegades, Memphis, Chuck Bushbeck kicking off. Orlando Renegades, Jerry Parrish has it at his 13-yard line. Parrish up to the middle, cuts to the right, uses his speed, and some great blocking in the middle of the field, and he is gone. Opening kickoff, 87 yards, touchdown. The Renegades lead it 7-0. Later on, with the score 14-7, Orlando in the third quarter, Reggie Collier, their quarterback rolling right, dies for the flag and scores. The Renegades, the underdogs, lead it 21-7. Fourth quarter now, Memphis comes back, Harry Sidney spinning his way into the end zone, 13 yards, what power, Renegades lead cut to seven, but late in the game with Orlando leading 21-17, here goes that man again, Reggie Collier doing it like he did at Southern Miss in college, using his running ability, Collier goes all the way for his third touchdown of the game, the Renegades win their first game as the Orlando team after two years in Washington, Orlando wins it 28-17 over Memphis. This was a week of upsets in the USFL. The San Antonio Gunslinger is playing a lot of inspired football of late. Easter Sunday afternoon in San Antonio, the Easter Bunny played a call along with the San Antonio Gunslinger cheerleaders. First quarter, Rick Neuheisel, quarterback of San Antonio, gets intercepted here by Chuck Clanton of Birmingham, his eighth interception of the year. Clanton returns it all the way for a touchdown. The Stallions, who were heavily favored, are leading 7 to nothing. Watch Mr. Clanton in the end zone. Third quarter, 14-6 Birmingham. Nick Mickemeyer gets off a weak punt for San Antonio, but he gets a strong roll. Goes down the field inside the 25 with Thad McFadden of Birmingham touches the ball. It's batted around before McFadden recovers, but he's all the way back at the Birmingham six. What a punt for Mickemeyer. A few plays later, Cliff Stout rolling right out of the pocket. Has his pass tipped and intercepted by linebacker Vic Miner. Now Miner has visions of the end zone. He could go all the way, but he forgets something. The football, he fumbles, but it goes in the end zone. It's recovered by Putt Schilt. The referee there never does signal touchdown, but it was ruled a touchdown, 14-12 Stallions. And Nick Mickemeyer gave San Antonio the lead with his field goal of 24 yards. Danny Miller had a chance to win it with a minute 42 to go, but his field goal attempt was partially blocked by Greg Fields. The upset, San Antonio wins by one over Birmingham. That was a shocker on Sunday. Also Sunday afternoon, here goes a shocker, at least if you're a Houston Gambler fan. Herschel Walker, 88 yards from scrimmage. A new USFL record, run from scrimmage for a touchdown. Herschel Walker would also set another record before this day was over. The Gamblers are back to punt in the second quarter. New Jersey leading 14-6. Gregory Johnson blocks the punt. The ball is knocked loose in the end zone. Maurice Clements falls on it. The Generals led 24-9 at halftime, and the route was on. Fourth quarter. And this is the score that iced it. Doug Flutie with the run in the end zone. Generals win it 31-25. This is uh, one big one for my record books or for my stats or whatever. I, I knew then that, uh, you know, I haven't been running 
while in a long time and I needed to work on my speed some work I may have lost it but I see that I still got my foot speed is still there and it certainly is Herschel Walker USFL record 223 yards rushing in one game well the Bulls and the Bandits last Saturday night at Tampa Stadium best crowd of the weekend 51,286 but Mike Rozier was not healthy his hands were heavily taped coming into this game limiting the kind of plays that he could be used on Tampa quarterback John Reeves was intercepted though on both the Bandits first two possessions this second INT coming at the hands of Mark Harper. That set up Jacksonville in business at the Bandit 10, where Larry Mason stepped into the end zone, and the underdog Bulls had a 7-0 lead. At the Jacksonville 15, after a Mike Rozier fumble, Reeves hits Larry Brodsky, and a nice move by Brodsky to get into the end zone to tie it at 7. Third quarter, Reeves to Gary Anderson, 14 yards, touchdown. Bandits led there, 24-10. Tough night for quarterback Ed Luther of Jacksonville. Luther was intercepted three times in this game after coming off a five-interception game at Birmingham the week before. This is INT by James Harrell. He had two on the night. Jacksonville coach Lindy Infante is not pleased, and why not? His team falls to 2-5. and five. Tampa Bay beats the Bulls 31-17. The Orlando Renegades of the USFL say they decided not to sign University of Miami quarterback Bernie Kosar. They're looking to trade his USFL rights to another USFL team. They say they're satisfied with Reggie Collier. So if Kosar goes to the USFL, it will not be with the Orlando Renegades.